guys, welcome back. Today we're at the 2015 Bullpup Shoot at the Site Training Center in Illinois, and I'm here with my buddy, Steve Colston. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good, man. Good to see you again. You we too. run into each other like once or twice a year, usually at events, and this time we were managed to, uh, to connect out here at the Bullpup Shoot. While we're making the video, Steve and I ran across this thing at the DS Arms booth. Now, DS Arms is known for their popular line of FAL rifles, but they're also into bullpups, and they have in their possession this CR-21, which is a South African bullpup. Uh, you had a chance to shoot this today, Steve. What do you think of this thing? You know, it shoots as well as bad as it looks. I mean, this thing is butt ugly, but <laughs> I was highly impressed once you got it lubed up and, and ready to go. The cyclical rate on it is really, it's, it's low enough to where it's very manageable. Um, the recoil wasn't too bad. It's got a non-reciprocating charging handle, which actually does move a little bit during the full auto shoot. Um, the controls are clumsy. I mean, we're not gonna lie, you can see in the right. video, the controls are pretty clumsy. Uh, safety's up here. Fun switch is back here. But hey, it's I mean, ambidextrous, it, it right? It is ambidextrous. <laughs> 2D stud, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, the optic, you know, wobbles on top. You'll probably notice that in the video too. Yeah, um, got a similar uh, uh, handguard to or, or to the Tavor there. I mean, it's the trigger sucks. It, it's it's a typical early yeah, bullpup design. It really uh, is. Th this this rifle is based on the Galil. You may notice that it's using Galil magazines. So internally, this is an AK. What they've done is they've taken the uh, well-known upturned charging handle that you would normally see on a Galil. They've cut it off and put a nub on the other side of the carrier, and that's how your charging handle works. It just kind of acts upon that little square nub hanging off the side of the, uh, the bolt carrier. Now, I don't want to take the rifle apart. It's not ours. Right. It's a very expensive and very rare rifle, but we were able to shoot it, and like Steve said, it has a very slow cyclic rate. It's like an Uzi. Yeah. It's like, it's like or, the Israelis are bigger than the... G36 or something, yeah. G36, yeah. full-size G36. Yeah. Extremely controllable. And it's actually quite fun to shoot, but it has some quirks to it, like yeah. you were saying. Check this out. So let me grab that magazine on my back pocket. Try not to muzzle you here. So putting the magazine in the gun is, is a typical rock and lock maneuver like you would do with an AK, but look where the magazine is in relation to the pistol grip. So you have to come in, get your fingers out of the way, get it in and rock it and lock it in. Taking it out, same thing. Hit the button, release, and now your finger hits, and you kind of have to work it out of the gun. Not very well no, thought out really in that isn't. regard. But Overall, I would imagine, being that it's based on an AK, it's probably fairly reliable. Now, we should mention this is 5.56 and 223. Right. So it's not 760 by 39 or anything like that, but it's, uh, it's a, I think it was well thought out for when it was made. I mean, it was pretty revolutionary. Um, but I believe the military, in South African military, is still using it, maybe? They're, they're still using the R4, which this is the based R4. on. Okay. I don't believe this ever made it into military service. We don't even have internet service up here, guys. We yeah. just stumbled into this yeah. thing. Uh, I'm going off memory, and, and honestly, I never paid much attention to this gun. Right. I, I recognized it immediately when I saw it on the table at the DS Arms booth, but uh, as far as having the full background on it, I, I really don't know the, the background. I just know that Vector is a South African company. I do know that it's based on the Galil. It uses unmodified Galil magazines, so it just takes standard Galil mags. There has been some talk of folks trying to manufacture this here in the U.S., but it's always fallen apart. Apparently, the South Africans aren't all that interested in, um, in, in bringing it to the U.S. market. But overall, I mean, I have no idea what the thing might cost. All I know is it's a lot of fun to shoot and really cool that we had the opportunity to do yeah, so. Pleasant surprise. It really was just kind of this diamond in the rough that we found, and they were kind enough to allow us to shoot it. Uh, quite a bit, actually. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, like, like Tim said, it was a great time shooting this thing. and, and a, Really fun to shoot, something that looks so butt ugly. It is ugly, man. It is ugly. It's like, you just want to love it, but yeah. you're like, I can't. Yeah. It's so swoopy. <laughs> it, it's kind of like those SKS bullpups, you right. know what I'm talking about? Where yeah. you take an SKS rifle and you kind of shoehorn it into a makeshift bullpup stock. Right. That's what's going on here. I mean, you can actually see the gas piston system mm -hmm. up here. The AKs vent off excess gas uh, right at the front of the gas piston. And you can see the holes are there. So it's venting the gas off right in front of your optic. Again, not very well thought out. And you know, this doesn't have a muzzle you know, device, a traditional muzzle device that we normally have like, you know, a brake or a comp or anything like that. This is just to be a flash hider. Right. And so even with the flash hider on, we were very easily able to keep the rounds on target, fairly tight group, yeah. dropping the entire magazine um, in one shot. So uh, extremely controllable. Yeah, extremely controllable. But what's kind of goofy, man, when you were holding it, the, the selector lever, so up is semi-automatic, down is fully automatic, has three bullets, but if you hold the trigger back, it just dumps the mag. Mm -hmm. If you were carrying this with your kit, uh, you might be able to, you know, you might be able to, to flip it back and forth between semi-auto, and then as you pointed out, it has a cross-block safety up here. So this is where you're firing safe, and then back here, 
on, on both sides of the gun, you have the selector lever. Yeah, it's just kind of an odd arrangement. But. Yeah, you kind of have to manipulate. You use two hands to manipulate the firearm. Yeah. But still very cool. It Actually, really is. I would love to see one on the US market. Yeah. It would. Call me crazy. I think the thing has potential. It's not that AK bullpups haven't been done before, but I, it, compared to other AK bullpups that I've seen, it's better than most. It's pretty unique. Yeah. 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 So anyway, well guys, I hope you enjoyed taking a t uh, glimpse at the CR21 made by Vector. Uh, again, this is from the guys over at DS Arms. I'll put a link to their website down below. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you guys soon.